Okay, welcome to Word Without Waltz. Welcome to the Tuesday night sunlight service this week. This is Heart Issues Part 2, and we're continuing to look at the heart. We're continuing to look at guarding or keeping our heart because out of it flow the issues of life, which to me means what flows out of the heart? Love. So what is the issue of life? Love. What is a heart issue? Love. It's all about love. So tonight we're really going to focus in on what it means uh, in Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7, what it means that we think in our heart. And, and really what we're hopefully what we're going to be able to see tonight is that on this side of the cross because of the finished work, our heart and our mind is really the same thing because it's the mind of Christ it's the heart of God beating in our chests, beating with love. Because really, you can't give what you don't have, and you can only give what you do have. So if you know that you're loved, then you can love. If you receive it, then you can release it. And, and again, you know, Proverbs 23, 7, the first part of it says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. What we believe is what dictates our reality. What we do flows from what we believe, and that's why behavior modification doesn't work. You have to get your beliefs right, and then everything else flows from that. Remember, that's what we saw last week, that believing in Him is what allows that, what, it allows what's inside of us to flow out of us. It's not forcing it out, it's not trying to get something, it's believing. And, and I thought this was really interesting in Proverbs 23.7. The word thinketh is number 8176 in Strong's Hebrew Concordance, and it means to split or open, to act as gatekeeper. And I think that goes right along with what we were talking about last week. Guarding our heart does not mean walling it off. It does not mean closing it down. It does not mean conceal, don't feel. Guarding our heart means keeping it open. Or, or when I saw that, that to split, to me what that meant was to share, to get, to split it and give it, share what we've got, open our hearts, act as gatekeeper, not to keep people out, but to keep it, keep the gate open. Remember Jesus, and we're gonna, uh, maybe not this week, but I think maybe next week. Remember Jesus in Revelation, it says Jesus says, "I stand at the door and knock." So if we're the gatekeepers of our heart, as we think in our heart, so are we. All we have to do is keep it open. All we have to do is know and believe what's inside. And then it comes out naturally. As we think in our heart, so are we. If we're open in our heart, we'll be open to everything else. We'll be open to God's love for us. We'll be open to each other's love for us. We'll be opening to loving each other. And, and again, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. If I, if I think in my heart that I'm loved, then I am love. Not just loved, but love. And that's who Jesus is. God in the flesh, love in a body. God in our flesh, love in our body. So, so again, when we think in our heart, or, or when we're open in our heart, when, when we're a gatekeeper who guards our heart, not by shutting it down, but by keeping it open, then we know and believe what's in our heart, and then it can come out, receiving it and releasing it. So, that took me to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. And it reads, like in the New Living Translation, Deuteronomy 30, verse 6 reads like this. The Lord your God will change your heart and the hearts of all your descendants, so that you will love him with all your heart and soul, and so you may live. And the first thing I want to say about this verse is that this verse does not mean love God or he's going to kill you. Okay? That's not what it means when it says you will love him and so you may live. What it means is that by loving him, and remember we love him by loving each other, that's how we live. Right? Because to live is to love, and to love is to live. It's the same thing. Life, love, light, consuming fire, spirit, all these different pictures, they're all the same thing. It's all him, it's all God, it's all love. So again, it's not do this or else, it's do this in order to, right? We don't, God didn't change our heart so he wouldn't have to kill us. God changed our heart because we were dead in our trespasses and sins, and he wanted us 
to be able to live. He wanted us to experience life. And the way that we experience life is by letting Him love us and loving each other with that same love. The way we experience His life is because He gave His life for us and He gave His life to us. So, again, what we see here is we don't see an or else situation. We see in this is how situation. Jesus never came and said, do this or else. Jesus said, here's how this works. Right? So again, and, and the second thing I want to notice from this verse, and I think this is so important for us to understand, the Lord your God will change your heart. You can't change your heart. And as hard as you try to fake it till you make it, that's all it'll ever be. If you try to act like Jesus, it will never be anything more than an act. It can't be. How could you change your heart? Right? The only way that we could ever do it, the only way that we could choose a better option is because Jesus showed us a better option. He showed us a more excellent way. Okay? So the Lord your God will change your heart. That's not something we do. That's not something we can do. And that's not something we're expected to do. Again, it's not about behavior modification. It's about a heart change. It's about a circumcision, which is, which is what uh, the other uh, translations in this verse to talk about a circumcision of the heart. Here it says a change of the heart. The circumcision is the cutting away the flesh of human effort. Cutting away what's covering your heart. Cutting away what's keeping the love inside of you buried. And once you cut that away, then you're free. Then, then what's inside can come out freely. Then you don't have to force it out. Then you don't have to act like you're trying to fit in. Then you don't, remember uh, Paul wrote in the New Testament, be not conformed to the world. Which to me always meant, we've been brought out of the world, don't go back to the world. But be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And again, the renewing of your mind. The heart and the mind are, are in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, where we stand today because of the finished work of the cross. The heart and the mind are the same thing. How else in Proverbs could you think with your heart, right? But what we're going to see is, it's, it's, not just, it's not your mind, but it's the mind of Christ. Because once your heart changes, then you will love Him with all your heart and soul. And in the Bible, the soul, it, it, it generally means your mind, your will, and your emotions. So when we're loving Him heart and soul, that's what Jesus, remember Jesus in the New Testament, He, he, he was asked, what's the greatest commandment? And He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength. And then He said, and the second one is just like that, love one another. So, what, again, what we see is it's a total and complete unity of spirit. It's not heart over here, soul over here. It's not the heart versus the mind. We always think it's head versus heart. But really, they line up when you understand that they're the same thing. When you understand that, that it's all about love. How you think in your heart, so are you. And out of your heart come the issues of life. So look at Romans chapter 8, verse 6, which I think says this a lot better than I'm trying to say it. Romans chapter 8 verse 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So again, we see the carnal mind, the, the, what we think of as the beast nature, the Adam nature before the cross, the selfish, uh, I need things, I want things, I'm trying to get things, that, that, that flesh of human effort is death. So again, God wasn't saying, you better love me or else I'm going to kill you. God was saying, you're dead right now. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He said, your carnal mind isn't going to get it done for you. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If you have peace, then you're not running around trying to get something. You're not running around like a chicken with your head cut off, always trying to get and get and get. If you have peace, it's because you know what you have. Because you know who you are. You know who your Father is. You're in a relationship. You know God instead of just knowing about God. Because God is spirit. So spiritually minded, right? Loving Him with all your heart and soul so you may live. Again, not, not or else, but this is how. How we live. Remember, uh, uh, one of my favorite verses talks about delight yourself in the Lord. And He will give you the desires of your heart. Because He is the desire of your heart. So when you delight yourself in Him, it's, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You delight yourself in Him and He gives you 
the desire of your heart because he is the desire of your heart and he gave you himself so you could delight yourself and it's like a big circle. It's like it's like a, a a consuming fire that consumes everything else except itself. It's it's love feeding on love. So there's again there's there's this carnal mind, or what we think of as our mind, and there's the spiritual mind, or or again the heart. And and we know which one is more important because again in Proverbs, as we think in our heart, so are we. Our mind can mess us up because in our in, in our mind we try to make things make sense. And when it comes to love, things very rarely make sense, right? So instead of trying to make them make sense, we just need to go with the flow. We just need to trust our Heavenly Father that He knows what He's doing. So now let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. And this is where it really kind of hits home about uh, the, the heart change or the circumcision of the heart or the shift from death unto life. And remember, and I, I, I know it's one of John's epistles, I don't know which one right offhand, but John writes, We know we have passed from death into life because we love one another. That's the difference between life and death. Love. If you know that you are loved, you can love others, and that's how we live. And, and again, that's what it says in Deuteronomy, when, when the Lord your God, will give you a change of heart. He will do the work so that you can enjoy the fruit of His labor. And the fruit of His labor is the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is love. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, in the King James Version, it reads, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that He may instruct Him? But we have the mind of Christ. Not we need the mind of Christ. Not we wish we had the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. And I almost I, I almost even like it better in, in the Message Bible. In the Message Bible it reads like this. It says, Isaiah's question, Is there anyone around who knows God's Spirit? Anyone who knows what He is doing? Has been answered. Christ knows, and we have Christ's Spirit. So again, when we think of the mind, it's not the carnal mind, which is death, but it's His Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. And, and, and again, if, if Christ knows what his Father is up to, that means we know. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Remember, even in the Old Testament, when God was talking to, uh, I believe it was Abraham, or uh, I think it was Abraham, and God's like, how can I do this without telling my friend what I'm doing first? We always think God works in mysterious ways, but really, he just works through people. Really, he just puts people in our path either to love us or so that we can love them. And, and as we're going to see, in a nutshell, that's what the mind of Christ is. That's what the Spirit of God is. The Holy Spirit is our love receptor. The Holy Spirit is how we receive and release his love. Because the truth of the matter is, is God has always loved us. God is love. What else could he do? The cross did not change us into somebody that God could love. He already loved us. The cross changed us into somebody who could receive God's love because the cross was Jesus laying his life down for us and then picking it back up and giving it to us. So now this life, this, this, this everlasting, eternal, abundant resurrection life of Jesus that we now have the ability and the opportunity to partake of, now that we have that, now what makes life abundant? Love. What makes life worth living? Love. What makes it possible to live? A change of heart, a change of mind, a change of spirit. Remember in the book of Psalms, I, I believe, I, I think it's in the book of Psalms, David cries out and he says, Create in me, O Lord, a new heart and a clean spirit. And, 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 and that, that, that cry, that plea, that was answered on the cross. God literally cut the flesh away from our hearts, the circumcision made without hands. And he said, my heart's been in your chest the whole time. It was just covered up. It was just hidden. And now the secret's out. Now it's not hidden anymore. Now it's Christ in you, the hope of revealing his glory. His glory's in there. And, and, and when we act as gatekeeper to keep it open or to split it or to share it, then what's inside comes out. We have the mind of Christ. It's not something we need. And, and again, really, it's something we've always had. 
It was just covered up. It was just hidden. It was just buried under the surface. But even then, the deep called out to the deep. And there was something inside of us crying out to be loved. And we wanted to love each other so that we could be loved by each other. But that's not how it works. You don't love in order to get. You love because you have something to give. So God was like, here, I have to show you how much I love you. I'm going to send you my son. And Jesus said, I'm going to show you how much I love you. I'm going to lay my life down for you. Jesus said, no greater love can a man have than to lay his life down from his friend. And he said, a new commandment I give unto you. Love one another as I have loved you. He gave his life for us. That, and, and, and that's what we can now do for each other. We can give our lives for each other. Not necessarily in the literal sense, even though you know that has happened and there are martyrs who have physically died for the church, but just in a spiritual sense where we just put others in, in front of us. Where, where I'll lay down. I'll esteem you higher than myself. I'm not worried about taking care of me, but let me take care of you. And that is exactly what it says in Philippians chapter 2. Verses, I want to read verses 4 and 5, but I want to read them backwards. I want to read verses 5 first and then verse 4. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 reads like this. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And what do we just see? We have the mind of Christ. When Paul's writing to the Philippian church and he's saying, let this mind be in you, he's not saying, get this mind. He's saying, you already have it. What you need to do is you need to let it be in you. Right? Remember the Beatles song, Let It Be? Sometimes we have to stop trying so hard and just let it be. It's already there. It's already deep within us. Remember the river of life. It flows from our, most, our innermost being. It's who we really are when we stop trying to be anybody else. When we stop trying to get something that we don't have, then we start to realize what we do have. Then we start to experience what we do have. Then we start to use what we do have. Then we start to share what we do have. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. This mind that we already have. We have the mind of Christ. He gave it to us. And now we just have to receive it and release it. Okay, but then the question becomes, how, how, how in the world am I supposed to do that? How do I let this mind be in me? How, how do I, in, in a sense, deny myself and take up my cross and follow Him? Well, that's the key. It's not about you at, at all. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6, the Lord your God will change your heart, right? It's not something you have to do. It's something that He did both for you and as you. So when we let this, how do we let this mind of Christ be in us? Look at verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. How do we let this mind of Christ be in us? We stop being self-centered and we start being Christ-centered. And when we start being Christ-centered, what that means is we start being people-centered. Because Jesus said, whatever you do unto the least of them, you've done unto me. So how do we love God? Remember, again, in Deuteronomy, it says, once he, it says he will change our hearts so that we will love him with all our heart and soul, and so you may live. How do we love God? By loving people. How do we let the mind of Christ be in us? We look at others instead of looking at ourselves. We don't worry about what we've got because we know what we've got. He's already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly Christ. He's already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He's already changed our heart or circumcised our heart. He's given us His Spirit. He's filled us to overflowing with it. What He filled us with, His love is so good. It's not too good to be true. It's so good that it has to be true. And Jesus said as much when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, this is the truth. This is the truth about God, and this is the truth about you. And the truth about God and the truth about you is that the Father loveth the Son and has given all things into his hands. He equipped and empowered us with everything that we would ever need to live. Remember, Jesus again, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Jesus wasn't concerned with good and evil. He cursed the fig tree because it couldn't produce any fruit. He said, I'm not here to give you a moral code. I'm not here to give you a religion. I'm here to give you life. And not just any life. I'm here to give you my life. I'm going to pour myself out into you to the point where you can't contain it. To the point where it's so big and it's so good that, that you can't keep it in if you tried. And, and it's so good that you don't even want to try to keep it in. You want to share it. 
I always quote this song uh, by Carrie Underwood. It says, what you got if you ain't got love? The kind that you just want to give away. Love isn't for keeping and hoarding. That when we act as gatekeepers, we don't keep it in. And we don't block other people out. We keep that gate open. Right? I, I, I believe in the book of Revelation when it talks about New Jerusalem, it talks about how there's no gate, there's no doors. There's no sunlight, there's no artificial light. But there's light in the temple because it's Jesus. And we are the temple. And there's light in us because He is the light of the world and we are the light of the world. The same light that He is is the same light that we are. The same love that He is is the same love that we are. And we let this mind of Christ be in us, by not, not by looking after our own things, but every man also on the things of others, by putting others first. By, and, and then if you go back another verse, to verse 3 in Philippians chapter 2, it says, Let nothing be done through strife and vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, the mind of Christ, right? Lowliness of mind. Jesus got down on his knees and washed his disciples' feet. He didn't think he was better than anybody. He put people, other people, First, it says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in holiness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. And again, I don't think that that means that you think you're less than anybody else, right? I don't think humble being humble means you think less of yourself. I just think being humble means you think of yourself less. You're not worried about yourself because you know you're taken care of, you're protected, daddy's got your back. So when you know that daddy's got your back, that takes fear out of the equation. That lets you love as big as Jesus loves you without fear, without worrying, without thinking, well, I'm going to lose what I've got. How can you lose what you've got when you're connected to an unlimited source? How can you lose what you've got when you've been given everything that you would ever need? Again, not to hoard up, but to share, to split, to open, to act as gatekeeper, and to let things that are in you come out of you. To let them come out. Not to force them out. To let them come out. To let the mind be in you. To look onto other people's. Look on the things of others. Esteem others higher. That's how we let the mind of Christ be in us. We stop focusing on us and we start focusing on others. Don't be self-centered. Be Christ-centered. Be people-centered. And that's one of the things that frustrates me the most about all of these arguments we get into about all these issues, because behind every issue are hurting people. And I would rather help those hurting people than be right about an issue. I'm not concerned with being right. I'm concerned with loving people. I'm concerned with helping people. I'm concerned with letting the mind of Christ be in me by esteeming others better than myself. And uh, I want to read it in the Message Bible, a little bit of it. It says, uh, we'll just back up to verse 1. Philippians 2, starting with verse 1 in the Message Bible, it reads, If you've gotten anything at all out of following Christ, if His love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me a favor. Agree with each other. Love each other. Be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Think of, the way, think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. And again, I think that, that that's how we let the mind of Christ be in us. We don't think about ourselves. As, I don't think about myself as Tom, I think about myself as Jesus. Think about yourself the way Jesus thought of himself. He had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave, becoming human. Having become human, he stayed human. It was, an, it was an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death. And the worst kind of death at that, a crucifixion. Even when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying to, 
his father, he said, Lord, he said, God, if you if if this cup can pass, let it pass. But not my will, yours be done. He said, if this is what you need me to do, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to put myself first. I'm going to put others first. If I need to lay my life down as a ransom, then I'm going to do it because I'm the only one that can pay this price. I'm the only one that can finish this work, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to, again, I'm going to live an obedient life, a selfless life. I'm going to live for others. I'm going to let this mind of Christ, which is already in us, be in us by looking on to others, by taking care of others. That's how we love God, by loving others. That's how the issues of the heart really allow us, equip us, and empower us to live. Because I, I'll, I'll say it again, to live is to love, and to love is to live. Those two things aren't just connected, they're the same thing. The issues of life are the issues of the heart. And the issues of the heart, there's only one issue, I think, of the heart is love. So that's, that's what, if, when you think in your heart, so are you. If you know that there's love in your heart, it's going to come out. What you believe is in there always comes out of there and it comes out naturally it comes out effortlessly it's not something you have to force it's not an act that you put on because it's who you are so that's what I have for this week uh, we're gonna continue with this this heart issues sermon series uh, probably at least for the next couple of weeks we'll see how it goes but as always um, I just I want to thank you so much for your support for your attendance for sharing and watching and, and liking the videos and the rants and the books and everything. Uh, I just, I really appreciate you guys. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen.